All right, let's take a moment to talk about the different types of chemical reactions. Here's the essential question for these notes. How do we classify reactions? Well, quite simply, these are the five different classifications of reactions. They are not in any particular order, but the first type is composition or synthesis reactions. Then there's decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. Now we're gonna go through examples of each of these and you'll be able to see how we classify these reactions based on how the elements are being formed and rearranged inside the entire equation. Now, one thing to note is if you look on the periodic table that's given to you in class, you're gonna see this on that periodic table, the reaction types. You don't need to memorize these different classifications and how they form. All you need to be able to do is use this resource to be able to classify those reactions. So please remember that. You're not trying, we're not making you memorize that. Please use these resources. So we're going to go through each of these step by step so you can recognize them a lot easier. And that's the main idea. If given a chemical reaction or after you write a chemical reaction, can you recognize which reaction type you're looking at? Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a, a composition, not a combustion, a composition or a synthesis reaction. This is where two reactants combine to form one product. Now I've kind of underlined one of the key indicators of the reaction that we're looking at. So notice we have two things combining to form one. Here's an example of that. Here we have iron and oxygen and they form iron oxide. So two elements forming one compound. Now it could be two compounds forming one compound as well. Here's calcium oxide and water forming calcium hydroxide. Again, two substances coming together to form one product. All right, the opposite of a synthesis reaction is called a decomposition reaction. One reactant breaks apart to form two products. Now again, I kind of emphasize the term one reactant. That's kind of a key indicator to let you know a decomposition reaction is taking place. So here we have potassium carbonate. Man, there's nothing it's reacting with. So the only thing it can really do is break apart into multiple pieces. So potassium carbonate breaks apart into potassium oxide and carbon dioxide. You can say, things, say the same thing about mercury two oxide. So mercury to oxide breaks apart into mercury, mercury and oxygen. All right, next is single replacement reaction. This is where we have a compound and a single element, and that single element replaces a similarly charged element in that compound. I like to think of this kind of like a dance. Here we have a couple dancing, and then over here we have just a single person or element, and that element wants to dance. So it's gonna go and ask one of the two other elements if it can butt in and dance. And depending on its charge, depends on which element it's gonna go ask. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here we have aluminum and iron two nitrate. In this case, we have our single element and a compound. Now aluminum wants to go and dance. So it's gonna go and attach to nitrate because nitrate's oppositely charged of it. And then iron's gonna go off and be alone. Similarly, here we have sodium or we have sodium iodide and fluorine, which is a diatomic element. Here, fluorine is our single element and it wants to go dance. So fluorine is going to go ask sodium because sodium's oppositely charged of it, and then iodine is going to go off by itself. That's a single replacement reaction. Next is double replacement reaction. This is where we have two compounds. This is very similar to a single replacement reaction, but this time we have two dance partnerships. Here we have partners AB and here we have partners CD. And what they're gonna do is they're just gonna change up friends. They're gonna change up partners. And A is gonna go dance with D and C is gonna go dance with B, always sticking to opposite charge. So here, here's lead to nitrate and potassium iodine. Lead is gonna go dance with the potassium and uh, lead is going to go dance with iodine, I'm sorry, and potassium is going to go dance with nitrate. Same thing, iron to sulfide and hydrochloric acid both do a double replacement reaction, each switching their elemental partners. All right, the last type of reaction is called a combustion reaction. Here it's pretty straightforward. We have a hydrocarbon fuel that combines with oxygen gas to create carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water are kind of in key indicators that let us know that a combustion reaction is taking place. Now a hydrocarbon fuel is typically between hydrogen and carbon stuck together. This could be like methane in this first example here. It's reacting with oxygen to create carbon dioxide and water. The next one is, a, is isopropyl alcohol. You can light isopropyl alcohol on fire with the presence of oxygen in the air, and it will also create carbon dioxide and water. 
All right, let's just do a practice being able to classify these reactions. So let's say we wrote these reactions and we want to be able to classify them. The first one is a decomposition reaction. Notice we're starting with one reactant. That's all we have, and it creates two products. The second is a single replacement reaction. Notice we have our single element and then a compound, and that element replaces one of the elements in that compound. The third one is a composition, or also called a synthesis reaction, where we have two things combining together to make one. The fourth one is a double replacement reaction. We have two partnerships. Sodium goes with chlorine, hydrogen goes with hydroxide to create water, and that's a double replacement reaction. And then the last one, is a combustion reaction. We have some type of a hydrocarbon fuel and oxygen, and we create carbon dioxide and water. All right, that's the end of our notes. Take the time to review these notes and highlight key terms. You might want to ponder and ask some questions and summarize by answering the essential question in a deep way. Good luck.